Hi, this is, my name is Barry Schwartz. I'm doing the Search Buzz video recap. I do this weekly at the Search Engine Roundtable, seroundtable.com. I'm trying something new now. Um, I'm actually going to be using a new uh, program called ScreenFlow to show you my screen, as well as I'm using my video camera over there and a video camera over here. And I'm going to see if I get it all working together. I'm not sure if it's going to work out. If not, I'm just going to show you what's on that screen and not necessarily what's on this screen. So um, let's get started. Today is uh, Friday, January 8th, 2010. Um, and we have a lot to discuss, discuss and we'll get started uh, pretty much right now. So the first topic I wanted to go through was the uh, January 2010 Webmaster Report, which I discuss often um, every month. Uh, once a month I do this report based on a Webmaster World thread showing what's going on in the past month at Google. Um, this specific thread didn't really have much to say in general until later on, which I'll discuss when we talk about caffeine being, um, some people think caffeine going live. But there's definitely a lot of shuffling going on. A lot of people are complaining that things have changed over time. And, uh, and I'll go into that in a little more detail after I discuss this. But overall, in the past month or so, let me tell you the main topics. Um, we, there was a Google Toolbar PageRank update, which we discussed last week. Um, there was also some type of mass PageRank penalty late, early, uh, mid-December or so. Um, Google released the Canoclial tab, which goes across domains, not just within domains. So you can actually do a 301 redirect without doing a 301 redirect. Um, we discussed how Google uses uh, CCTLDs over the server location in order to rank uh, more in more geographic uh, locations. Um, Google promised to fix their Webmaster Tools verification bug, which is part of the API. Um, also, Google also said that they're going to actually add a trustworthy indicator to the site performance tool. Again, all these things I discussed in the past weeks, I'm just going to summary, I'm giving a quick summary of what happened over the past month at Google. Also, Google removed the SEOs from the local pack local 7-pack, which we'll discuss actually later on in more detail. Yahoo added Twitter search results to their search results. Um, Google made lar had larger images and regional tags in the search results. Uh, the Jazz, or the blue Google interface, um, actually was announced, and I'll talk more about that later because a lot of more people are seeing it. Google dropped Answers.com from their search, uh, Google for the Google definitions, which is a major thing for Answers.com. And uh, we also talked about malware. Um, a little bit malware, and we'll get more into that later as well. So let me go into the caffeine uh, index, which I promised to uh, discuss. Um, as you can see, um, I discussed earlier that the webmaster thread is pretty much buzzing with, with um, caffeine-related questions. Um, it seems like Google search results are very, very, uh, I guess, all over the place, meaning that a lot of people are saying that their search results are, the search results have changed drastically. A lot of people are saying that this has to do with caffeine. Um, I'm being told by people at Google, and a, a Google PR person, that this is not caffeine related. They didn't say what it is exactly, but they said it's definitely not caffeine related. I, I listed some, not all, some of the uh, IP addresses that uh, which data centers are being reported as being caffeine. Again, Google saying it's not caffeine, and I have confirmation from Google that it's not caffeine. Uh, but this is not the first time um, we reported that caffeine might be going live, and it's not going live, but that's something you should know, that a lot of shifts are happening in Google, and you should be aware of that. Um, also, I talked about the Google, Black, uh, Google Blue interface, which was being nicknamed Jazz. Um, here's a picture of it over here. Um, as you can see, the Jazz interface um, is blue, and we discussed it about November or so where Google announced that they're actually going to make this more and more uh, available to people. Uh, some people like it, some people hate it, but a lot more people are actually noticing it now. Um, here's some more photos of it. Here's the Jazz interface with local results. Here's the Jazz interface with actual search results. And here's the Jazz interface uh, on their homepage provided by uh, uh, Chris Way. Also, a lot of people are noticing a lot more malware in the search results. Um, it's not that Google's not getting better at detecting mal malware. They actually are. They're actually better at detecting it and removing it from their search results. But at the same time, uh, people who, hackers and spammers who are injecting this uh, spyware and malware into the Google search results are getting faster and quicker at doing that. And I showed an example of, of uh, a search for BlackBerry News um, a week ago, or BlackBerry News, you did a search for BlackBerry News, up came um, these types of results over here, um, which were actually injecting malware on people's computers. 
and then it redirected the person as a 302 redirect to CNN. Let's move over to Yahoo. Um, there's a possible Yahoo search update. Um, some people actually suspect it has to do with the Yahoo paid inclusion, which was supposed to be out of the index as of January 1st. Some people were saying it was still live, but according to some other people, it had actually been removed in the past few days. So because of that, people are saying maybe the Yahoo search update is not really an update, but it's just people noticing that the Yahoo paid inclusion results had been removed. You can learn more about this on uh, January 6th and January 4th at seroundtable.com. Also, um, a major blunder that happened this week with Google is in regards to the Google Local Business Center, the Google Maps listings where it shows business listings. Google sends out these newsletters every so often, and these newsletters basically have a summary, and I'm showing you right here on the screen, a summary of how well that listing did in the Google local results. So it shows you how many times it appeared um, in the search results. It shows you um, how many times it was clicked on, how many people clicked on directions, more info, and, stuff, and how many people actually clicked on your website. What happened was that Google sent out these uh, search results to uh, these, these newsletters to people who signed up for them, but the problem is they sent them to the wrong people. So I got a, uh, a local business newsletter for a company called Polk Mechanical. And lots of other people got uh, these newsletters with other people's statistics for, their other, for other people's businesses, which is somewhat confidential. It's not really the most uh, you know, private data in the world. But, and it's not, the, it's not like they're leaking the most sensitive data in the world. But it's still information about other people's business. And other people have received lots of other people's business listings um, in the search results uh, by Google. Google fixed this issue, they apologized several times, and they're going to take, uh, it was supposed to be a human error when they actually manually sent out the newsletter, and they hope to fix that and make sure that never happens again in the future. Also, remember a few weeks ago, a week ago, we talked about how Google dropped the SEOs and web designers from the local pack? When you do a search for, I don't know, let's do a search for mold uh, 10952, which is the zip code around this area, and you'll see this local pack. It's seven results that come up at the top of the search results, and this is pulled from Google Maps. Now, if you do a same search for SEO, that is gone. If you do a search for web design with the query, it is gone. Google consciously, um, a few weeks ago, removed it. A week ago, removed it because they're saying that people searching for SEO with local intent or web design or web developers with local intent, meaning local key keywords in the actual like a zip code or in city parameters, that that is not something that they find to be relevant for that uh, searcher. So at the same time, Google said they're actually going to remove it, and they removed it. Oh, and actually they removed it, and they afterwards they said it wasn't a bug why they removed it. It actually was intentional why they removed it. So SEOs, web designers, got upset with Google. Now Google's coming in and saying they understand both sides of the issue. At this time, they think this is the best thing that Google could do, but they might change that in the future. Um, so I take that to mean, as I mean, if, if SEOs and web designers continue to continue to complain, and if Google finds that some people are looking for that intent when they're searching, that Google might bring it back. So I suggest if you want uh, the local pack to show up for SEO-related keywords and web design-related keywords that you should keep up on Google and tell them that uh, they should uh, keep it there. On the funny side, let's talk about Bing. Um, Bing admitted in a Bing forum, Brent Young over at the uh, the program manager of Bing Webmaster Central, and they're not happy with me because I constantly beat up on Bing and it's nothing to do, it's just something that you know lightens up my day. I really appreciate them being candor. I really appreciate the way they uh, are so open in the forums. Uh, but I think it's funny when, when you have somebody from Bing saying they're fairly slow. And this is what happened um, just the other day where I found that pro the program manager at Bing went ahead and said, it is well known in industry that MSN bot is fairly slow. I'm going to bring up the uh, result here that actually shows, shows it. And I'm going to highlight it. As you can see here, this is what Brett said. And you can see over here that he's the program manager. He's an official program manager from Bing. So it's funny to see uh, a search representative actually say that. Um, also, he also said that a good way to get included in their index is to, and I, I just was joking here, to spam Dig and to spam Yahoo Buzz because they actually crawl that. And I'll show you what he said exactly. Scroll down. Oh, he edited it. Oh, he changed it. But he originally said, 
It is if if your site has uh, if your site has uh, good content, submit them to Buzz and Dig, Yahoo Buzz and Dig. Both have a high chance of getting your page indexed. And you see, after I wrote about that, he edited his post and just linked to past blog posts about how to get quality links and stuff like that. Anyway, is this another way for me to beat up on Bing? Again, they are doing an incredible job. A lot of people are switching. I know a lot of people are happy with them, but at the same time, it keeps me something. It gives me something to write about, and it light lightens up my day. So thank you. Um, let's move over to Ad Center, which is Microsoft's uh, search product. Um, over the over the uh, break, uh, the January uh, New Year's, for some reason, a lot of advertisers noticed that they were getting free clicks from Ad Center. By free clicks, meaning um, the reporting tool in Ad Center was showing that they were being charged zero dollars for every click. Um, later on, I reported that, and Ad Center went ahead and tweeted. Oh, no, let me show you the tweets. Ad Center went ahead and tweeted that their engineering team is looking into the zero spending issue, and we'll keep you updated. This was on January 4th when they tweeted that, and then on January 5th, they resolved the issue, so you were not actually getting free clicks. Um, let's move on over to the AdWords topics. Um, this is a new uh, uh, beta. Uh, that Google AdWords, Google AdWords is testing out. It's basically called a contact form extensions beta. And basically what it does is it allows people to, you get an ad, you click on the little plus box, and when you click on the plus box, um, it opens up this little form over here. And let me get a zoom into this picture. So as you can see, it's a little plus box, you click on it, and then you can fill out your, your phone number and some basic information about your business, and then that goes sense, that's being sent to Google. Once, you, once the uh, searcher sends this to Google, you'll get an email as an advertiser saying, somebody f uh, filled out this lead form, here's the lead ID. You then call a Google 800 number, type in the lead ID number, Google will then forward you to that uh, lead uh, dynamically. It's pretty cool. They're charging a maximum CPC, so it's basically a very cheap CPA model. Um, and I'm not sure how widespread this is. I know only PPC Hero reported it, and they have a lot more information at their website about it, so definitely take a look at that. Also, Google's going to be offering click-to-call um, directly on mobile phones. So if you're if you're doing a search on your mobile device, Android, iPhone, Palm Pre, uh, or whatever, Google is going to soon be offering click-to-call in the search ads. When you click on it, and it automatically will call. It's going to cost a cost per click basis, but the phone number will actually trigger um, a cost per click and trigger an ad, which will be nice because people on the go typically like to, uh, I guess, call instead of uh, reading more. And we also ran a poll uh, saying that 65% of PPC uh, advertisers have competed in uh, bid wars. As you see, here's the breakdown. Um, here's the poll right over here. Um, do you complete in PPC wars? Some uh, people say sometimes uh, when necessary. That was about 41%. 35% said never. 13% said all the time. And 8% said sometimes, but only when they're bored. Um, so that was pretty, uh, that was pretty uh, interesting. Um, I think I wrote in one more poll. Let me just find it. Yeah. Here's the other poll. Basically, we asked if most advertisers are afraid to make changes to their campaigns or not. There was a thing about adverse paralysis, meaning adver advertisers were afraid to make changes to their campaigns. And we asked people if that's true, if advertisers were actually true. 42% uh, of our respondents said no, they are definitely not afraid and they're making changes constantly. Some said they are somewhat afraid. 29% said they're somewhat afraid, but they do make changes anyway. <clears throat> and 26% said they are very afraid, um, but they, do, they don't, and they don't make changes to their campaigns because of it. So it's pretty widespread over there. All right, let's move into the mis mis miscellaneous topics. Um, yes, we found Googlers again this year working on New Year's Day. They worked on Christmas Day. They worked on New Year's Day. They worked on Christmas Eve. And this is going for back to 2006. It's nice to see Googlers working because obviously a lot of webmasters and SEOs work on holidays. Um, anyway, John Moose specifically uh, posted um, posted in the, in the different threads. He posted in the Happy New Year's thread. And, here's a, 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 and he posted in other threads helping webmasters. But here's proof. January 1st, Happy New Year, everyone. But he also posted other threads to actually help uh, people. Here's an example of one thread that he posted in on January 1st to help people with their webmaster related problems. Finally, the Isaac Newton logo. Um, this was posted on January 4th. It was the first animated logo on Google ever. And here's a video showing that how it actually worked. You mouse, you just wait, and the apple drops. And as you can see, um, 
the thing falls on the floor. So that pretty much covers the uh, Search Buzz video recap. Again, today is Friday, January 8th, 2010. Thanks for listening to, the, to this recap. This is the news we covered over at the Search and Roundtable, at seeroundtable.com for the past week. Everyone have a great weekend, and we'll catch you guys next week.